the bishops, Catholic bishops of Nigeria had a meeting in Enugu that ended last Friday. At the end of the meeting, there was a message from the bishops to the church and people of Nigeria. Because of the events of the youths last Sunday, we couldn't give you that message. And today, we present to you the fruit of our meeting. The church and prophetic witnessing in Nigeria. And you shall be my witnesses even to the remotest parts of the world. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. A communique issued at the end of the second plenary of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria, which held at the Holy Ghost Cathedral, Oguyenugu, from the 19th to the 27th of August, 2021. We, the Catholic Bishops of Nigeria, held our second plenary meeting for the year at the Holy Ghost Cathedral, Oguyenugu, having prayerfully reflected on issues affecting the church and the Nigerian state, we now issue this communique. A call for prophetic witnessing, conviction, and resilience. The present times demand that we listen anew to the Lord's command to us to be prophetic witnesses. A prophet is not merely one who predicts the future, but one who reinterprets the past, explains the will of God for the present, and in this way shows the right path to the future. As witnesses, we must show clearly and unmistakably that we firmly believe what we are seeking to propose to others, that we are truly living what we believe, courageously preaching what we live, and are ready to defend that message even with our very lives. After all, what is faith if it lacks resilience? Resilience amidst challenges is, however, never a call to indolence or mere passivity. As Christians, we are followers of Jesus Christ and should always adopt our Lord's approach of prayer and concrete action as a strategy for survival. In this wise, we all are called to witness to our faith with conviction wherever we find ourselves, in the church, at home, in the family, in the marketplaces, in the field of politics and commerce, in public offices, and in other places and in other areas of life, especially when it is not convenient. We admonish all Christians while continuing to pray and propose Christian values to always seek out ways of doing something concrete to make the society better. State of the nation, increasing insecurity and violence, need for the respect for the sanctity of human life. We strongly advocate total respect for the sanctity of human life, Regrettably, except for the civil war, our nation has never witnessed the kind of widespread evil, wanton destruction of and murderous bloodletting. Life has never been so cheap, nor has Nigeria ever been at the stage we are now. Deaths in the hands of kidnappers Killer headsmen, bandits, terrorist groups 
have made Nigeria one of the most terrorized countries in the world. The abduction of school children presents us with the prospects of a traumatized generation of young people. We recognize the efforts being made by the government to fight insecurity in the land. However, we stress that government needs to show more strategic community and sincerity in this fight and take full responsibility for the present culture of violence and impunity in the country. Furthermore, government must be balanced and seen to be so in its response to the challenges of insecurity in every segment of the citizenry. In the same vein, we call on all citizens to be law-abiding, vigilant, live by sound moral principles, and above all, obey the commandments of God. We continue to plead with all to shun violence and criminality. We urge government at all levels to provide enabling env the enabling environment that would make it possible for both the government and the private sector to create job opportunities for our teeming youth population. This would surely reduce the danger of insecurity and unrest in our land. National unity, justice, peace, and development. We are grateful to God that we still exist as one nation. This is in spite of sundry agitations and struggles for self-determination. We observe that the agitations and tensions are mainly as a result of bad governance, injustice, inequality, and unfairness in appointments and distribution of resources to parts of the country. We recognize the rights of peoples to self-determination, yet we emphasize that the exercise of such rights must be within the confines of the rule of law. We urge the government to ensure a just and fair trial of the arrested key players in the struggles. To mismanage these cases is to trigger off further avoidable unrest. We urge both government and citizens to work for a nation in which everyone and every part, irrespective of differences of tribe or religion or political affiliation, will have a sense of belonging. We reiterate that the struggle for the soul of Nigeria that is presently ongoing will not be won by ethnic cleansing, nepotism, kidnapping and banditry, but by love, fairness and equity, common good and patriotism. We therefore enjoin government and all Nigerians to tow the path of justice and conciliatory dialogue and see themselves as agents of peace and development in order to ensure a harmonious and united nation. While we congratulate the federal government for enacting the Petroleum Industrial Act 2021, we advise that the federal government address the genuine concerns of the people regarding some clauses in the Act. It is our hope that the implementation of the provisions of the law will truly serve the common good. Politics and electoral reform. As church, 
we keenly we are keenly interested in the political situation of our country although the church does not support any political party she however supports every government that prioritizes the welfare of the citizens in the same way the church vehemently condemns government policies that do not promote development and the common good. We insist that there is an urgent need for a fair and credible electoral process through which our political leaders emerge. We therefore state loud and clear that the recent voting by the National Assembly against electronic transmission of results of elections will create opening for further manipulation of electoral votes and lay the foundation for more conflicts in future elections. We call on the National Assembly to reconsider its position in the light of world best policies. Celebrating the Holy Eucharist, the mystery of faith. The fathers of the Second Vatican Council rightly proclaimed the Eucharist as the source and summit of the Christian life. This makes the Eucharist central to the life of the church. The heart of the mystery of the church is the Eucharist, the mystery of faith. This mystery of faith certainly deserves to be celebrated with untainted faith, deep love, and manifest devotion, always taking care that monetary matters do not distract the faithful or detract from the solemnity of the celebration. We therefore urge priests to show and grow their commitment to the Eucharist. They are to celebrate the Eucharist as servants of the mystery, not masters of it. As servants, priests are called to be conscious that adding or subtracting from the proposed missal text does not build up the faith of the people. We exhort our priests to intensify their efforts in making adequate preparations of themselves and of the people. In celebrating the Holy Eucharist with great reverence, devotion, and love, the people are nourished in the Word of God and their faith is strengthened by a worthy reception of the Holy Communion. Intensifying catechesis and evangelization. Regardless of our challenges, all of us are called to take part in the missionary going forth to encounter the men and women of our times where they are. But for this to happen, it is incumbent on all Christians to make an unconditional option for Christ, even in critical times such as the ones we are passing through today. Flight from God, the jettisoning or watering down of the gospel values, resort to violence through revenge killings and reprisal attacks, and a return to fetishism and idolatry in the face of difficulties can never constitute enduring solutions. For as the psalmist sings, those who choose other gods increase their sorrows. Psalm 16 verse 4. That is why it is now all the more imperative for all teachers of the faith, but especially bishops, priests, and religious, employing the use of the communications media, homilies, relevant literature, 
catechisms and other wholesome strategies to rededicate themselves to intensified catechesis and the evangelization of our people. Indeed, all teachers of the faith have a duty to challenge the faithful to embrace the gospel in its totality with an exemplary witness of life rooted in Christ as well as fidelity to him in the living out of the temporary realities. The family, culture, professional commitment in the world of work, science and research, the exercise of social, economic and political responsibilities. The need for integral Catholic education. The primary goal of Catholic education is not just to prepare people for earthly life, but also for salvation. The youths learn about God who wants to develop all our capacities until we become our best selves in a way, as a way of giving glory to him. And this, it is, it is when we focus our energies on knowing and serving God that we become our best selves and are able to make positive impact on society. We call on all Catholic educators to understand that the way a person chooses to exercise her or his development, her or his knowledge is an, as important as having knowledge itself. Therefore, we encourage character development, instilling in all learners ethical values that ultimately guide their decision-making process from their personal everyday behavior to their chosen career paths. Moral conduct as, dedicate, as dictated by Christian principles is to be built into every fabric of school culture. Following the example of Jesus Christ, Students should be drawn to model Christian behavior by respecting the dignity of each individual and be encouraged to express their faith in word, thought, and deed. Above all, Catholic education should focus on forming compassionate and just leaders who are prepared to rise up to and confront the complexities of ever-changing Nigerian society. Young people who go to our schools should receive solid and quality academic formation foundations, spiritual fortitude, strong moral convictions, and the desire to be actively engaged in their communities. Events in the church. The 16th Ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops comes up between October 2021 and October 2023. And the theme is for a synodal church, participation and mission. Right now, the 52nd International Eucharistic Congress is ongoing in Hungary, in Budapest. It will end on the 12th of this month. And later this year, on the 8th of December, the ongoing year of St. Joseph, will be concluded. The Holy Father Pope Francis on May 10th issued a motu proprio antiquum ministerium, the ancient mystery, established, establishing the lay ministry of catechists. We, the Catholic bishops of Nigeria, welcome with joy and enthusiasm 
this newly established ministry. And we will work hard to make sure that this ministry bears the desired fruit. With joyful exaltation, we note, note the steady growth of the church in Nigeria. Some dioceses have celebrated important anniversaries and some of our colleagues, the bishops, have also celebrated important anniversaries of their episcopal and priestly ordinations. We congratulate all of them and rejoice with them. The Holy Father also made the following appointments since our last plenary meeting. Bishop Michael Upong, Auxiliary Bishop of Omahia. Bishop Luca Sylvester Gopep, Auxiliary Bishop of Mina. Bishop David Ajang, Bishop of Lafia. And Bishop Peter Ngorie Chuku, Bishop of Abakaliki. We welcome these our brother bishops into the conference, assuring them of our prayerful support. With firm faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we announce the passing on to glory of some of our brother bishops who served the church and humanity with total dedication. Archbishop Peter Jatau, the Emeritus Archbishop of Kaduna. Archbishop Bishop Gregory Ochiara, Emeritus Bishop of Olo. Bishop Albert Fashino, Emeritus Bishop of Ijebude. We pray Almighty God to grant them eternal rest in his kingdom. Amen. Conclusion. Let us hope in God for a better Nigeria. As Christians, we are called to constantly hope in God who never fails. The virtue of hope enables us to seek eternal happiness and union with God and happiness on earth as well as we place our trust in Christ's promise and rely not on our strength and ingenuity, but on the strength and grace of the Holy Spirit. We therefore call on Nigerians to hope and work for a better Nigeria, knowing full well that without hope, we as a people cannot move forward. No matter how difficult the times are, no matter the situation we may find ourselves in, let us continue to hope in God and feel secure because our hope will never disappoint us. Romans chapter 5 verse 5. We however need to cooperate with God to attain the better days for which we pray and hope. We ask that on October 1st Every year, every this year, every parishes all over the country hold a candlelight procession and pray 20 decades of the rosary for peace and unity for our country. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of all consolation and Queen of Nigeria, continue to intercede for our country. Amen. This was signed by Most Reverend Augustine Obiora Kubeze, the Archbishop of Benin City and President of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria, and Most Reverend Camillus Raymond Omo, the Bishop of Ikore Ekwene, Secretary of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria. <laughs>